Hi all, welcome to Salesforce in 5 minutes. In this video, we are going to answer all the questions of my recent interview shot. But before getting started, if you really like my videos, please do consider subscribing to my channel. So let's get back to our video. So the first question was, what exactly is an Apex Hammer? So as we all know, Salesforce goes through multiple releases, right? So whenever you have opened your Salesforce, it um, sometimes shows that Salesforce will be in maintenance from this date to this date, or even Salesforce have multiple releases like summer release, winter release, and uh, autumn or whatever. There are different types of the releases in Salesforce, right? So when this Salesforce release is done, what Salesforce does is it will run all the Apex test classes available in your Salesforce app. So whenever there is a release update, Salesforce will run all the Apex test classes in your Salesforce app and that term is called as Apex Hammer. Now this Apex classes are ran so that to understand is there any hamper because of the release that they have created right now. So to understand is there any hamper because of the release update, they that they run all the Apex test classes and that term is called as the Apex Hammer. So let's go to the next video. Next is what are the different ways to take input and pass it to the JavaScript in LWC? Now there are two ways, specifically two ways to do it. One of the ways using on change and sorry, it should be no space. And another one is nothing but the this is the template selector. Dot query selector or either Query selector all. So there are two ways to do it. Uh, one of the ways is nothing but on change, and another one is nothing but this dot template query selector or query selector all. Now, when do we use on change? Oh, let's name it as one and two. Now, when do we use on change? Let's say you have an input box, right? We have an input box, and as soon as we are making changes to this input box, Okay, what we'll do is we will write an on change on this input box. So as soon as we are making changes to this input box, we can write a JavaScript function at the back end. Now using this dot right handle change and there will be a javascript uh, at the back end as well so what this javascript is going to do is it's going to take create a function there's going to be change like for an example i'm talking i'm typing salesforce in five minutes inside the input box whenever the value is getting changed inside it handle change will work and whatever value like salesforce in five minutes we will get it inside e we can get it using event dot detail dot value and whatever value you are getting we are assigning it to a particular variable this is one of the way and another way is what we can do is let's say you have multiple input boxes and this is one of the most common one like you have multiple input boxes let's say input box this is one of the input box this is one of the input box this is one of the, this is one and there is a button at the at bottom right and this uh, input box might have certain certain thing common like lightning input box there is something called as lightning input so there is something common in between them right so as soon as let's say on change I'm going to write on change again handle change I'm going to write this is all about HTML and I'm going to go to the JavaScript part what you can do is now if you want to if you're clicking the button you want values of all these input boxes so what you can do is in that case is you can use this dot template dot query selector and you can specify lightning input 
or we can use lightning qu query selector all why am i using query selector all i'll explain you that as well so what will happen is if i have only one element right if i had only one input box then there was no use to, uh, no need to use lightning selector because there is only one input box with lightning input right but right now we have multiple of them right so i have to get all the values of this input boxes so i'm using query selector all it will get values of all the input boxes and then we have to loop of each of them we have to assign uh, it to a value and then we have to we will assign it to a variable and then we will loop on this variable to get the specific values so this is the second way that is called as this dot template dot query selector or query selector all so let's move on to the next question next question is what does sosl returns now the sosl returns list of list of s objects so this is also most asked interview question as well what does sosl returns list of list of s objects so now if you are running an apex class and if you have written sosl inside this apex class keep this in mind because it returns list of list of s objects and if you are uh, using an lwc component with uh, apex class which has which is having sosl uh, you have to use dot and dot and multiple dots or you have to loop multiple times so keep this thing in mind uh, if you are uh, using an sosl it will return list of list of s objects let's move on to the next question what does with security enforce in soql uh, query exactly does right so this is an interview question again this is also one of the most asked interview question so let's say if there are any fields or object like for an example uh, you are writing a query right if you have a certain kind of query like select id comma name from contact something kind of a query you have let's say okay and let's say there is a user named as test he does not have access to this objects or he does not have has access to this field as he does not as have the access to this field an exception will be automatically thrown or the data won't be written if you are using with security enforce keyword inside your sql query so what does this mean is if i'm going to write a query select id comma name from contact and there's a with underscore security uh, uh with Or if it does not have fields access to this name field again error will be thrown or no data would be returned to that particular field so this is how with security enforce keyword box or security enforce keyword box so that's all about all the interview questions if you found this video helpful please 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 do subscribe to this channel